All right. And are you, um, Mary Pearl, are you going to be able to monitor chat? Um, yes, or... ma'am. Okay. I'll be I'll be on chat. All right. So I will start sharing. Thank you so much. Oh, you'll need to enable sharing for me. Working on it. You should have it now. Do you have host now, Michelle? I do. Hold on. I'm okay. trying to select my uh, presentation. Okay. Hold on one second. It's not, um, my presentation is open, but it's not allowing me to share it yet. Okay. Okay, so I have, um, I think it's one o'clock and we can go ahead and get started. Thank you everyone for um, introducing yourself in the chat and uh, letting us know your name, um, your chapter that you're representing and whether you're an incoming or outgoing chapter president for the 2022 calendar year. Um, welcome to our December, our monthly presidents, chapter presidents, monthly meeting, chapter for pre, chapter presidents and advisors. Um, for those of you who are new to the new incoming presidents, we do hold these meetings monthly. Um, at when the pandemic started, we started holding these meetings monthly with our chapter presidents, and it's something that we're going to keep holding um, in perpetuity. So. Um, those of you who are incoming, um, please know that we will continue to hold these for you in the new year too. <clears throat> we have an uh, overview of our agenda today. Um, we mentioned our, just in, for incoming leadership, our monthly meeting format. Um, we do have a couple of questions we wanna ask incoming and outgoing chapter leaders um, for advice and feedback for you as part of today's meeting. Um, we'll give you a recap of the 2021 annual meeting, um, some closeout of this calendar year, the program calendar year, and then uh, an update on some of our 2022 planning. And then we have a couple of um, other resources and informational uh, items that we will uh, share with the new incoming presidents to um, going forward. So uh, as I mentioned before, welcome to all of our incoming new uh, chapter presidents in 2022. But um, maybe even more importantly at this stage uh, in the game is I want to thank all of our chapter presidents that have been leaders over this past year. Um, and some of them, some of you leaders over the past two years, which have, um, probably been some of the more challenging years uh, leading across the pandemic um, for the program. So um, some rest months for some of our presidents who may be leaving us um, at the end of this year. Um, thank you for everything you've done, um, your leadership in, in the program, in your, in your chapter. 
um, over these past uh, one and two years uh, leading through a pandemic and all of the policy changes uh, that our program has seen over the past two years. So thank you for being a leader and a voice through all that. Um, and most importantly, thank you for your service um, over the past one and two years. For those of you who have different um, tenures in your chapter. Uh, and then to our incoming presidents, uh, thank you for saying yes. And um, congrats, congratulations on being um, voted as, a, as your chapter president. And um, we're so happy and honored to be working with you in the new year. And it's something we're so excited about and looking forward to. <clears throat> um, Mary Pearl, I didn't know, if, were there certain slides you wanted to cover or you wanted me to just move ahead? You tell me and I'll, I'll jump in where you want me to. Okay. Um, well, I'll continue on with this. Um, our chapter presidents, as I mentioned, uh, we have begun these meetings monthly, um, particularly when the pandemic started, we will continue these. And um, with the changeover, because we're in December and with the changeover of uh, the, the calendar year, which is the programmatic year for our Texas Master Naturalist program, we want to remind you um, as these changeovers are, changeovers are taking place in the new year, if you could update your um, officers and committee contact lists uh, for your chapter within the volunteer management system, the program's volunteer management system. Um, there is a tab in the user defined field and your VMS, your local VMS admin can assist you with this if you're um, having trouble finding it. But there is a TMN directors and officers um, and committees tab in the VMS in our um, user defined fields that you can fill out and uh, toggle uh, your, your office and committee chairs in there. So this is uh, the most, probably the most important thing is the VMS is where we pull the contact um, information for each of our officers and committee chairs of the program and of chapters. And um, this is where we grab the list of presidents for each year. And so we will use that list in the VMS to um, communicate with you and share the monthly meeting um, links for it with you um, from that list. For those of you who are new, we um, strive to keep our present monthly presidents meetings to an hour. Um, there are some months that things are pretty busy and pretty hectic. Um, they may go past an hour in some cases. Um, we'll announce, typically we have these meetings via Zoom. Um, we will announce the monthly meetings um, a week or so in advance, week to two weeks in advance. We also have a list of dates for you that we'll show you here today and they'll be recorded in, in the notes. We record these meetings and then post them um, for you afterwards so that even if you're not able to attend, they are there for you to um, view following um, along with the notes and um, Chats, chat as available. Follow up meeting, follow up items we cover in uh, post email, post meeting email when needed. And then um, some questions we often get about the, the chapter president's meetings is are these meetings um, service time? And absolutely, as, as a chapter president um, for your chapter and a communication link with the state, um, these meetings can count for volunteer service for. Um, the time that you attend them. Typically, um, they're about an hour. Sometimes um, there might, it, I think the top end that we've ever had is two hours, but typically we, our meetings are about an hour. So with this um, December and January timeframe, we often, this is our leadership transition for chapters. And we have um, some questions for you. This is obviously an opportunity for you to share information with incoming presidents um, and outgoing presidents, things that you've learned, tips and advice um, that you have for the incoming chapter president. So I'd like you to um, list in the chat. We have a couple questions listed here on the screen. And the first one I'd like you to text chat with us is what is one word? So the outgoing chapter presidents, what is one word of advice that you have for incoming chapter presidents? 
and you can either cut off mic and share that or um, share it in the text chat too. Michelle, I can read some of these as they're coming in. We have words like flexibility, staying organized, persevere, patience, uh, having a thick skin, definitely. Um, I love Emily's, she said, let the TMN mission guide chapter decisions and initiatives, um, and then enjoy. And I, I definitely hear that from some of our outgoing chapter presidents as they transitions out, um, wanting to make sure that you're enjoying the time that you're spending in a leadership role. Sharon Hamilton shares a great, um, a great tidbit of wisdom. Um, gather contact information for everyone. <laughs> Absolutely. All right. Um, we've had some of the chat kind of slow down on that first question. How about the next question? Um, please share one idea or tool that has helped you in your chapter management over the past one or two years. And Bert's giving a big shout out for Slack as a tool that his chapter uses for staying involved, delegation from Rich, um, keeping your membership committee close at hand, <coughs> sharing the duties, not trying to delegate, uh, not trying to do it all, but using the resources and the membership as uh, to delegate duties to. And don't stress, you always have multiple resources. Attend as many events that you can so that the membership sees your dedication to the chapter. I love that one, Donnell. Knowing you have resources and definitely delegation. Seeing uh, others help. Um, delegate mm -hmm. others help some valuable and great advice there great thank y'all for sharing so bert there is um i'll take a minute for you to put a plug for slack if you could um come off mic and describe slack we have some new obviously new people um who are new to slack and that as a tool could you describe that for them and, and um, what's available through Slack? Uh, sure, Michelle. So Slack is a collaboration platform that's in use all, all over the world, just millions and millions of people. It was recently purchased by a little company called Salesforce, which is the, the largest uh, contact relationship management company in the world. So it's not going anywhere. And the good news is if you're 51C3, like iChapter, you get to use the standard version for free. So basically you can store messages forever. Uh, it takes the place of a lot of email for our chapter and people can collaborate in real time. It also has instant, instant messaging, file storage, security. Um, it's just awesome. <laughs> and um, at our uh, state VMS admin meeting last week, I asked Michelle if I could put on classes uh, for anybody statewide to attend to uh, for Slack. But we're also using Slack at the state level. Uh, currently, it's only being used by presidents, uh, VMS admins. I think there's a new, what's called a channel for membership directors. Does that about cover it, Michelle? Yeah. I, I could go um, on for an hour. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, have, we'll have more information about Slack, especially for those of you incoming presidents in the year. And as Bert mentioned, we are going to be offering um, a couple of training sessions on just uh, if you're into if you want to use Slack, it, it is an optional thing, um, but it has been useful for um, our various leadership positions across chapters um, as a communication space and uh, asking questions and kind of connecting with um, people who share the same. Um, um, leadership positions within your chapter or across chapters. And um, we will offer some trainings on kind of the how to, the basics, um, how to get started with Slack, what it's used for, and what's there specifically for the account that um, Bert helps manage for the, the state program. All right. Um, so I'm gonna change gears a little bit and ask the incoming chapter presidents um, to answer some questions in the chat or uh, put their questions in the chat um, or answer this question in the chat, sorry. 
Uh, if you've had time to think about it so far, what are your top goals for 2022? Or what chapter goals do you have for 2022? So as a president for uh, 2022, what are your goals or what are your chapter goals for 2022? And Michelle, I can read those out of the chat for us. Um, and as a reminder, if you are not um, unmuting and speaking, if you'll just mute yourself to help uh, with meeting sound. Some of the things that have come in so far is continuity, uh, increasing our educational programs and educational outreach. Top goal is to reinvigorate the club and get more projects going that coordinate with purpose. Education, growing membership, involving that membership collaboration with other chapters near us. That's great, Kathy. Recruiting new leadership. That's an, an ongoing need for every chapter um, to get together for meetings and outside for volunteer work, facilitating involvement for all members. And I'm not reading all of these, but I'm just grabbing a few of them. Um, and it's so great to see that you guys are thinking through all of this stuff, facilitating getting back to in-person events and succession planning. great great stuff um so now the next question since we've slowed down on some of the the input there in the chat regarding question um your goals the next question we have for you is um we want you to be able to utilize this time uh as to the best of the ability while we have this this uh knowledge pool on of uh, outgoing chapter presidents, and some of them have been in, serv in serving in that role for one, two, um, or more years, depending on their term limits for their chapter. Um, so for the incoming chapter presidents, what questions do you have for chapter presidents uh, on the call who may be outgoing or leaving their office at the end of this year? Um, I love Michelle's question. She says, where do you, where did you spend most of your time? And Suzanne asks, what's been the hardest thing to overcome? And so these are great questions that our outgoing presidents uh, feel free to answer in the chat if you'd like to chat um, to everyone and, and at Suzanne or at Michelle. Or come off mic if you, if you yeah. want to answer it um, come by coming off mic too. <clears throat> um, a lot of people have said uh, a lot of their time was spent communicating, um, sharing information with their chapter, communicating information, communicating for the organization. Um, computer has obviously been a um, big <laughs> resource in doing that. Call from unavailable. Call from unavailable. Communication is huge. Yeah. Michelle, I can't unmute folks if you'll help me to manage and unmute those folks. Yeah. Or mute those. Yeah. So um, Sharon Hamilton has, uh, has a good uh, note. Um, she spent a lot of time answering questions. So she recommends that you review the CMOP in bylaws. Um, I also saw someone else mention um, having all of those guiding documents printed out and in a binder and kind of taking them with you to meetings and having them kind of on your desk or wherever you're working from so that they're close, closely available um, to be able to look up uh, any, any information that may be needed to make a decision from, the, from those guiding documents. There was a great question in the chat as well about um, what the guidelines are from the state office for for face to face versus virtual, and um, I don't I don't know uh, who said that specifically based off of the the name that's in Zoom, but 
Um, our state website will have answers and resources for any sort of COVID updates, but that's what the point of these meetings, these monthly chapter presidents meetings is as well, is to be able to communicate those, um, those needs and those uh, changes at the state level. And we'll talk a little bit about the COVID guidelines um, later today in another slide, just real quickly. Um, but yes, if, if we are, um, if face-to-face -face shuts down again, we will communicate with the chapter presidents as soon as we know that, if it were to happen. All right, in the essence of time, I'm gonna move on to our next slide. Um, as a reminder, we will pull the chat and make it available for you um, at the, after the meeting and after all of our um, information is posted from today. Um, thank you, everyone. It's such great information and uh, tips and advice and reminders there. So great questions. Um, all right, so um, we wanted to give an overview of the annual meeting. The annual meeting each year is our, our major advanced training event um, and major meeting uh, for the program annually in October. And so we have a little, uh, a quick recap of uh, the 2021 annual meeting and then just some Real quick updates about uh, beginning the plan for 2022. So Mary Pearl, would you want to cover these? Couple Absolutely, I sure, I sure can. And, um, and I'm joining by my phone and I wanted to give a thank you to Michelle. I uh, had a chance to get outside today and so I took it. And so Michelle's running um, the tech for us today. Um, our annual meeting uh, a few months ago now up in the Irving area, we had 691 registrants. This was our first hybrid annual meeting with 475 virtual and 216 in person. Um, you can see the stats there at the top. Um, we had 106 speakers, 128 sessions. Um, so it was great to have a variety of different topics and people uh, speaking to those topics. Um, our recordings are still available post-event. Um, they will be on the CVent event attendee hub for 90 days. And then we're working to download them off of the event hub and put them onto our YouTube channel to share those to those who have registered for the conference um, via YouTube so that the, they have a longer period of time to be able to access those. And that information will be coming here shortly um, before the end of the year. Our highlights for the event um, are, are similar to many of our highlights that we have annually with our annual meeting. We have a, a keynote uh, either Friday or uh, Saturday. And this year we had two on Friday, which was a double dose of awesome um, speakers. And we had Drew Lanham and Amy Martin. And then we have a science fair winner award presentation each annual meeting. And that happened Saturday at lunch with our uh, annual milestone awards and contest awards happening Saturday and then Sunday morning as well um, with the pin announcement culminating at the end of the event. Some updates and we've shared some of this with the uh, uh, president on the last meeting call but I wanted to tell you guys where we were. Um, again, I said 691 registrants. Our gross income for the event was 121,000. You can see the uh, plus the sponsorships and you can see that breakout there. Um, this hotel has uh, taken a little bit longer to get the final bill to us than uh, standard. So we are still working on that final bill settlement. And once I have a, um, a net revenue, I will report that. Unfortunately, I'm not able to report it at this time because um, we're still working on the final bill with them. Um, say that again. Okay, I'm going to keep going. Um, the 2020, any uh, net revenue um, that's generated from uh, this year's meeting is directly applied into the 2022 annual meeting contract. We do have a contract on file with the Omni Houston for our 2022 meeting, and I'll, I'll talk through that here in just a second. Thank you. Um, our virtual nature venture was hosted by the Cross Timbers chapter um, and, and a big shout out and thank you to them. We can keep going. Um, some questions for the chat and I'm gonna go quick through these again, just to, in the interest of time um, and our 
outgoing presidents have already seen this. Um, so please share these in the chat and we'll log them for reading after the meeting. But um, if you did attend the, the annual meeting, please share what topics you found were the most memorable um, and those that we should highlight um, that you thought were um, great speakers, great topics that might deserve a statewide attention level at a upcoming TMN Tuesday presentation in 2022. So please share that as you're available, as, uh, as you can in chat. Next slide. And then finally, kind of closing out our, our 2021 annual meeting review, thinking about next year, um, please save these dates as, as incoming chapter leaders or those that are continuing on in your position. Please make sure that all of your members are aware of those dates, um, especially your training committee. We ask that training committees avoid scheduling uh, basic training during the, um, during the weekend of the annual meeting to give all uh, new training class members a chance to join their first annual meeting. We find that if you attend your first annual meeting the first year or second year of your membership in the Master Naturalist program, um, it, it creates that family feeling and, and it keeps lifetime members involved. We are going to be at the Omni Houston Hotel. Um, like I said, we do have a contract with them and we are um, seeking input, input and feedback on the final format for the meeting. So you'll see some questions there, starting with the Thursday evening uh, meal, chapter leadership lunch, and then um, if we should have a fundraiser again or not. Um, again, I'm just for the sake of time, because I, I do want to make sure that you guys are uh, getting the, the bulk of this uh, meeting, which is talking about 2022 planning. Um, if you'll chat any of those comments or notes, and then um, I'll log those to respond to later. Michelle, if you'll keep going for me. And same thing about 2022 annual meeting, you know, we'll be 12 months down the road from 12 months further away from COVID, hopefully. Um, and, and so we've got, we have started to ask ourselves the question, um, what type of meeting are we looking at? Are we looking at a fully hybrid like we were in 21? Or are we keeping some things that worked from hybrid and, and losing those other things that didn't work as well? Um, and to what degree do we go hybrid, all or parts or, um, or what that looks like? Um, and we're gonna take all of this feedback and um, consideration and then really crunch the numbers to all of it um, and look at the, most, the best and the most economical um, setup for the, the annual meeting next year. Okay. All right, so the next um, little bit that we'll talk about is our closeout of 2021, um, being that we are, are in December. Um, and we can't do a closeout without doing a uh, quick review of the past year. So in um, 2021, we had some new communication methods. Um, the first thing we tried that was new this year was our TMN Tuesdays. Um, we continued our monthly chapter presidents as another um, another way to provide um, uh, the most up-to-date communication and another method of communicating with our, our chapter presidents and keeping the lines of communication open. We um, continued our web apps, um, or sorry, we continued our website. Um, our website was updated in this year and then our events calendar we added. Um, we increased our social media presence and just getting information out via our social media outlets. Um, we tried the new training models uh, from ranging from in-person to virtual to hybrid. Um, we did monthly advanced training opportunities with at the state level with our TMN Tuesdays events and then also our um, diversity um, be the change uh, events. So we, we drastically um, uh, increased our advanced training opportunities from the state level, um, made those available through recordings, um, and they're all on our website for you. Um, we had, we continued with our new virtual volunteer fair. Um, we hosted two of those in 2021, um, all by popular demand. Um, we did more state-sponsored advanced training, um, as I mentioned, the TMN Tuesdays and the Be the Change webinars. Uh, and again, in the essence of time, uh, we'd like to ask you these to 
feedback questions, but if you could go ahead and put this in the chat. Um, if, if you are an incoming president, we've already asked this question, these questions to our outgoing presidents in the last meeting, but if you're an incoming president and you've attended either the Be the Change event webinars or the T any of the TMN Tuesday webinars, let us know what you thought of them, how they worked for you. Um, and then also all of you give us your feedback on um, these new these new methods and uh, communication methods and advanced training events that we've been offering. Um, does it work for you? Do they allow your your chapters and your members? Do you feel that they allow your chapters and your members to be more connected um, across all channels of our program? <clears throat> Some lessons learned through um, over the past year. Um, we've learned that we need to remain to be flex flexible, um, flexible with our training. Um, we saw that the training environments, uh, we lowered some of the accessibility barriers, um, that being flexible helps with doing that. And then uh, identifying communication efficiencies and new tools. Um, it's one of the things we learned over the past year. Um, and then with, especially with the Do the Change webinars, um, Learning to work with new and diverse partners for conservation and volunteer projects um, have all been valuable um, lessons and priorities for us over the past year. A couple of uh, continuing to close out 2021, um, just letting you know we had the chapter presidents meeting in November um, with, all, with our outgoing presidents. Um, December tomorrow, December 14th, will be our last TMN Tuesday of the calendar year. We have um, Steve Paul, who, who's joining us to talk about our agency's uh, new 3R plan, recruitment, retention, um, recruitment, retention, and the third R has escaped me at the second on the spot. Reactivation. Um, reactivation. reactivation. Um, Steve will be talking about, in terms of um, uh, what does the future of conservation look like um, in terms of our three R's? And then today um, we have our, our final chapter president meeting of this year, and that's what you're on at now. I mentioned the TMN Tuesday that's taking place. Um, that was announced via our social media and on our listserv on Friday. I'll send that information out again today uh, to the listserv. Um, you are all invited, everybody's invited to attend these and um, even the public. And you can uh, find out more information at the link there or on our website. If you just click the TMN Tuesdays uh, icon and links there, you can either register for tomorrow's session or um, watch the recordings of any of our past sessions listed there um, from the entire year. We know that um, uh, all of you have had your chapter elections and um, we're looking forward to the changeover of your leadership in the new year. We hope you are too. It's always an exciting time um, with um, new leaders, new ideas, um, and new information coming available. So it's a time to refresh and um, plan for the new year. One of the ways our, many of our chapters do that is they plan board retreats. Um, and we have seen from our standpoint, uh, chapters that have retreats for their new boards um, and help with that transition of exiting and incoming member uh, membership and leaders. Um, our successful chapters. Um, we heard from many of the chapters. We asked the same question at the last November meeting. Many of our chapters do the, um, do the board retreats um, in the new year. And we, if your chapter does not yet do those, we encourage you to um, consider having a board retreat for your new board in the new year. Um, another plug and reminder to just help us, help us communicate with you and communicate with the most up-to-date um, leaders in your chapter and update your BMS um, contacts for your chapter uh, as soon as you can. <clears throat> um, and I already, you're, on, you're at the, pre the president's meeting today. And then uh, 
those of you who are incoming presidents for 2022, um, mark your calendars. January 25th will be our first uh, chapter presidents meeting of the 2020-2022 calendar year. And then um, as you're planning and thinking about the new year, um, some things I wanted to share with you, um, just our, our chapter, think about your chapters who may be having an anniversary um, and talk about this at your board meeting um, or board retreat in the new year. So uh, chapters who are celebrating anniversaries in, in 2022, our five-year anniversary chapters is the Lower Trinity Basin and Prairie Oaks chapter. Our chapter celebrating the 10th anniversary in the new year is the Blue Sim chapter. A 20-year anniversary is our Hill Country chapter, the Rio Grande Valley chapter, Rolling Plains in South Texas. And then um, our Alamo area chapter is celebrating their 25th anniversary in the new calendar year. So. Congratula congratulations um, to all of you in the new year, and we'll be looking forward to uh, celebrating those accomplishments and milestones with you. A um, couple of quick January updates. We have January 11th will be our first TMN Tuesday advanced training event of the new year. Um, that will be a kind of a state of the program um, in what's ahead for the new year for us. And then uh, the 25th, as I mentioned, is a chapter presidency. All right. Did you want to, um, Mary Pearl, you want to cover this one for training? Absolutely. We actually got a question about that in, um, in chat as well. So we did have a temporary uh, training uh, policy update for the calendar year 2021. That's January 1, 2021 to December 31, 2021. So it's still in place for just a few more weeks. Um, and so you can see here on the screen that that uh, basic training policy covered, uh, that temporary training policy covered both basic training and advanced training. Um, there was no change to volunteer service requirements in 2021. Um, our advanced training did allow for uh, pre-recorded uh, AT sessions with follow-up live Q&A with uh, speakers by the same speaker, um, and then hours were watched. Uh, hours were able to be counted for those um, both watched live and then also the Q&A time afterwards. Um, this is all found on our website, and so I won't read um, all throughout all of it, but the rest of the um, temporary training policy for both 2021 and 2022 are under the chapter documents tab on our uh, website right now. You want me to do the next one if you want to keep going? Actually, this is yours, Michelle, if you want to talk about this sure, one. I can, I can cover it. So um, we did share this with in um, the November meeting, but in 2021, we will, because it was a, an odd year again, um, we were in various closures and um, shutdowns and um, working from home or volunteering from home events across 2021. We will be able to offer the um, service against all odds um, pin again this year, so 2021. Um, kind of um, recognizing uh, what our master naturalists could accomplish uh, in 2021, even uh, despite all of these um, setbacks, um, again, for the program um, and in your respective communities. So uh, this pin will be available for 2021. Um, it's for members who have, who it will recognize members who have obtain all of their advanced training or eight, at least eight hours of advanced training for 2021 and at least one hour of volunteer service for the year. Um, when we pulled this data in um, October, uh, late October, early November, that uh, included about 3,000 master naturalists at that time um, based on what had been entered in VMS to that date. Uh, so there's still some time if you have members who 
um, still need to report the final push for advanced training or still need to report at least one uh, hour of volunteer service, there's still time to do that. So we have through the end of um, the year, the end of the calendar year, December 31st, to for them to obtain that advanced training um, or obtain at least that minimum of one hour of volunteer service. So um, another plug for getting your hours in um, by the end of the year. Uh, these, these pins, we will pull the reports after uh, around February 15th, which is the close of the 45 day reporting window period for December 31st. Um, we will mail all chapters, probably the end of February, beginning of March, uh, their list of members who've reached this milestone or uh, this pin for the year, and then the, the set of pins that you will be able to distribute. Um, so I'm happy that we're able to offer this again, uh, recognizing and thanking our members for their service and continuation of the program again through, through your, another difficult year. And then lastly, um, moving on to some other thoughts for closing out the end of the year, um, especially from your chapter standpoint and your organization standpoint. Um, we do have a data retention policy on our website. You can find it at the link listed there. Um, and just a reminder that it's always a good time to clean out the old chapter files at this point in time or at the end of the year and getting ready for the new year. That includes um, financial documents, old chapter membership lists, old meeting notes and minutes, um, paper sign and sheets, anything that you had in paper and on paper and you're still um, holding in uh, files. Uh, you can, it is, we are at the kind of the seven year and uh, four year time period from our grant and for IRS purposes um, that you can uh, get rid of those. And then lastly, um, if you could review all chapter meetings and organizational documents with incoming leadership as needed. So as you're cleaning out those files, um, perhaps you want to pass them on to the new president, incoming president, to just share some history um, about the chapter with them and they can help um, manage files as, as needed. So looking ahead to 2022, um, some of our pro program planning and dates we have coming up for you. Um, one of the things that uh, we've been communicating with our, our 2021 chapter presidents about, um, and it is on our website now, is we've had a, a major update to the CMOP. Um, technically, not much of the, not much of the policies have changed in the CMOP, it's been reorganized. Um, and I'd like to, again, thank Chris Morrison and Lori Buckham um, from the Gideon Lindstrom chapter uh, for helping with this uh, huge un undertaking that we've been working on across the year. Uh, that document is there now. It is the document our program will operate under for 2022. So if you have questions about that, um, please let us know if you have any remaining questions about the document. Um, again, it is the document that will guide and our program will be operating under for the 2022 calendar year and actually the next three years. Since we are in a three year cycle of that um, CMOP update now. Um, just giving you a couple of screenshots of the, the list of things that uh, took place with the update of CMOP. So grammatical corrections, um, cross-references to other documents, we clean that up, reduce the text, make it more concise, um, and reduce um, unnecessary, re eliminate unnecessary redundancies. And then um, questions of policy were reviewed by the state leadership and resolved. A uh, quick summary of uh, I won't I won't read all these to, those these to you, but um, we did include a new table of contents for the CMOP, so it will be a little bit more to it'll be it'll be a little bit easier to move to the sections that you're interested in um, or looking for. 
Um, all of this is on our website and the document itself is there too now. Um, for 2022, I know many of you who've been serving in the last couple of years, COVID policies and interim COVID policies have been something we've had to deal with um, in at some points during the pandemic on a weekly basis. Um, currently, uh, if there is, uh, our current COVID policy is on our website at the, the link there. Um, it is at the top of our website right when you go to it, it's there. Um, it, it remains unchanged um, since our last meeting and uh, for the last, I think probably since June, it's re remained unchanged. So the, the basic of the COVID policy right now is that um, just every chapter needs to be aware of the local, um, the local protocols uh, regarding uh, gatherings and masks if where required by your local communities. So your county, um, your city emergency management um, will be will provide guidance on that and kind of dictate what happens locally uh, with your chapter in face-to-face -face meetings or masks and things like that. Um, aside from that, the, the policy at the state level, uh, we just need to remain flexible um, and realize that even with training um, and depending on the status within your local community, things can change pretty quickly. And so um, we, we need to just continue to remain fluid in um, our plans for face-to-face uh, -face gatherings and in-person events. And Mary Pearl, jump in if there's anything you wanna to add to the COVID policy. Yes, ma'am. Actually, I can cover, cover, yeah, I can cover this. And then I think the next couple slides I can cover too. Um, so I talked about the temporary training policy for 2021. We are extending that for 2022. Um, you can see um, that all also on our website. Um, one of the exceptions to the rules um, is state office offering. So any um, Master Naturalist annual meeting training or TMN Tuesday or Be the Change does have a um, exception uh, listed on it. And you can see that on our screen, our 2021 annual meeting advanced training window is open from um, October when the meeting occurred through April of 2022. And I'll be sending out um, some more information to our VMS admins and chapter leadership on that um, before the end of the year. And then our team in Tuesday and be the change. Those uh, that exception is that recorded sessions can be watched for AT hours through um, uh, through the end of the calendar year in which the event occurred. So for 2021, uh, our team in Tuesday, like what's happening tomorrow, um, that watched live or watched recorded can only be counted through December 31st, 2021. So you can only watch it as a recording and count it for 2021 hours. Um, and then in January, you'll have to wait until the first TMN Tuesday of January to watch those recordings and count or watch them live or recordings and uh, count them for advanced training. If, if you need some clarification on that, because I recognize that that's a mouthful, um, send us an email. It is on our website as well. Okay. Um, also on our website right now, um, and hopefully in your inbox, if you haven't seen it already, we'll send it out again. Um, we have a spring 2022 training press release collection on our Naturalist News webpage. Um, so you can find that online under Naturalist News. It's the third tab at the top. And, um, and clicking on that will get you to, um, to that page. If you are hosting a spring training, um, drop that in the chat. That'll help us so that we can make sure that we've got all of our spring classes listed on our, our website. Um, and then feel free to share if you're hosting in-person, hybrid, or virtual. Um, and I've got some more stuff about spring training classes. I know you're gonna ask me about WebEx or about OWLs, and I'll talk about that here in just a little bit too. Um, I'll keep going, Michelle, unless you want to holler at me. Um, so some more dates to put on your calendar. And we will, again, Michelle mentioned at the very beginning, we will put these slides on the website. So if you don't catch these dates and you want to go back and catch them later, this um, will all be on our website to review later. And, and I'll probably send it out in a follow-up email 
um, tomorrow at some point. I just wanted but, to let you know. I just yes. let you know that, that I said I would contact him. And then I oh. know. Michelle, is she talking to me? Yeah. I, I just no, I'll try and mute. Okay, thank you. Okay. So our 2022 chapter president's meetings will be um, month, held monthly on the last Tuesday of the month. There are a few exceptions um, to move around for summer break and for uh, holidays. So you can see our, our listed Tuesdays here on the screen. Um, one of the questions that we do need answered today from uh, everybody that is incoming to the um, to the presidency or incoming as a role uh, for an advisor uh, is if we should keep these meetings at the one o'clock p.m. central hour or move them to noon hour. And the, the reason uh, Michelle and I's thought process here is that we have the TMN Tuesdays currently being hosted at on Tuesdays at noon. And so this would just be one less time change that you'd have to remember if we moved it to the noon hour. So all things state master naturalists would be offered at um, at noon or or do we keep chapter presidents a little bit later in the afternoon so y'all drop that in the chat and some we'll other chapter presidents over the past couple months that um they work so a new meeting may be a little bit easier for them to attend um but we haven't asked that question of the incoming chapter presidents so um for those of you incoming let us know what works for you and go ahead and put that in the chat if you can. So put your number one preferred time that'll work for you. And then as always, our chapter president's meetings will be held uh, via this Zoom format. I typically send the link out at least a week to two weeks ahead, um, depending on the type of month we're having. Hopefully I try to get them out earlier um, so that you have them. They are the same link every single meeting. So you don't have to um, change links at any point unless something happens to our Zoom account. Um, and, and we'll send out a tentative agenda just like we did for this meeting. All right. Uh, and then, yeah, I'm going to just keep going until you tell me to stop, Michelle. Um, I, I owe you. You totally let me be outdoors all morning this morning. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It's a beautiful day here. Um, the TMN Tuesdays for 2022, um, we are keeping the same uh, timing for. So please let your membership know second Tuesdays of the month at noon. Um, and we have those dates all listed on the, the screen here. You will notice that there are two blue arrows. Those two blue arrows mean that those are overlapping meetings with the chapter president's Tuesdays. And we kept those on purpose um, to be able to allow those TMN Tuesdays to focus on uh, chapter management, leadership, uh, kind of local chapter um, needs. Um, one of the thoughts that we have for the July training, uh, July, TMN, July TMN Tuesday, I'll get it, is to talk about training class best practices. And there's a question mark there. We're still working through that. So if y'all have other suggestions, we'll take them. And then the December um, 13th, 2022 TMN Tuesday and chapter president's dual meeting um, we're considering as a case study on board retreats or on chapter leadership retention and recruitment, um, something along those lines. So again, those are our ideas, but, um, but we'd like to hear from you as well. And you can go ahead and um, put those in the chat as uh, if you have other ideas. And then our January 11th uh, TMN Tuesday, um, the, our next TMN Tuesday after tomorrow's event will be our state of the program. That was something that we started in 21 and it was a, a good way to, to connect all of your members, even those that are new um, to what's happening at the statewide level and, and uh, kind of make connections across the state. Thank you. Okay, I'm gonna keep going, Michelle. Yep. Um, our, our Be the Change mini series was our diversity, equity, and inclusion program that we hosted from March 2021 until October of 2021. Um, the plan with those mini, with that mini series, was to culminate with a workshop um, 
to develop resources, tools, and, and a listening ground for our chapters as they worked on diversity, equity, and inclusion initiatives locally. That spring 2022 workshop is shaping up to be within that first week of April. Um, there's a, a three-day window that we're still trying to nail down uh, speakers and, and resources for, but it'll be that first week of April um, and we'll have hopefully have those that final date, single day date to you um, within the, the next month or two. Um, Michelle and I have also been working on drafting a survey for the Be The Change, and you'll see that in your inbox um, as well. And then, you want me to keep going? Sure. Okay. The, the Be The Change on the, that final thing on the Be The Change is that um, that workshop will be virtual um, and we will send out the, the date here shortly. Um, and then our virtual volunteer fair. So we heard, um, we, have, we have held three of these so far one in 2020, two in 2021 um, with, with good success for the virtual volunteer fairs. We um, sent out a poll to chapter leadership a few months ago and they said, yes, please host another one of these. So we are planning one for the first week of May of 2022. Again, we'll have that uh, date to you, hopefully here shortly, we're trying to make sure that we've got um, some of our collaborators on board for that time time of year. Um, the only way that our virtual volunteer fairs are successful is if you help us to connect with those natural resource conservation partners in your area that are seeking volunteers in a off-site virtual um, or, or limited capacity way. Um, so we will be sending that out to you to, um, to get their information to be able to connect them with this virtual uh, job fair for volunteers. All right, then the next thing I want to cover <clears throat> is uh, for those of you, especially those of you who are incoming and new over the past couple of years, I want to share some of the chapter resources that are available or have been made available over the past couple of years um, and new. So the regional, we have the regional WebEx accounts, which we set up um, as a result of, of the at the onset of the pandemic to help with um, online training and meetings. And so we are keeping these for 2022. Um, I manage the WebEx account uh, accounts. There are six of them, as you see here on the map. We have chapters kind of collected by region um, and using. So all the people you see in region one are using the region one account. Um, everybody in Region 2 are using the Region 2 account and so on. Um, the one thing that I do need to let you know about those is that when you record meetings, um, I, because the storage on those is limited, um, we ask that your chapters save the recordings to locally to either to a machine and share it with your, your membership um, right away. Um, I do go in at the 5th of every new month and uh, clean up the recordings that are there um, so that we can, if there are too many recordings on the account, it will not record the next one. Um, so we want you to be able to use those to their, the best of uh, they are capable for. And so we try to keep those cleaned up uh, as uh, monthly, on a monthly basis. So just a reminder at the beginning of the month, um, I try to get it done by the 5th. I go in and delete any of the recordings that happened that are uh, more than a month old. So uh, just a reminder on that. Um, quick little reminders that we, on the WebEx accounts, just please don't change the profile picture or the account name there, um, keep it the same. And then uh, before setting up any new meetings in um, your WebEx account, your chapter's regional account, um, please check the calendar to make sure that you're not setting it, setting up a meeting over top of somebody else's meeting because uh, these accounts, you're not able to hold multiple meetings at the same time on these accounts and you would kick somebody off um, who may be having a chapter meeting at the same time. So we don't want that to happen. Other resources, you want to talk about uh, WordPress, Mary Pearl? Yeah, absolutely. So we mentioned this on the last month's meeting, um, but for our incoming chapter presidents and leaders, we are getting a new website support specialist within the AgriLife First Call office. 
Um, they are uh, hiring that position to help with all the master volunteer websites. So that's master gardeners and master naturalists. So we're excited to have them share with uh, us a resource for additional monthly trainings, um, focus support for first ticket call issues, website links that are broken, things like that. So that'll be coming hopefully um, early on in the new year. And then once we have that, we will share that with you as well. Okay, keep oh. going. And then um, meeting owls. So we used a new tool at our hybrid annual meeting in October. We used a meeting owl pro. Um, it's a fantastic little um, uh, device that does both microphone, speaker, and video for uh, creating a hybrid atmosphere that feels very inclusive. Um, this was a, a new tool to us and we wanted to fully test it out at the annual meeting. And now we have 10 of these in our state office that we are ready to loan out to chapters. Um, they, they are quite a costly uh, piece of uh, uh, device technology. Um, so we are sending them out on long-term um, half year loans to chapters to avoid shipping them back and forth multiple times. Um, I have, I believe, um, five remaining in my, my uh, inventory right now. If you are interested in, um, in borrowing a meeting owl for the first half or for the second half of 2022, fill out the form that you see on our website for the meeting owl and I'll, I'll get that logged in to, to ship you one. All right, human merchandise. Yep, and then TMN merchandise. Um, so we have two different types of, of Master Naturalist swag or gear. We have state offered items, and then we have local chapter produced items. Our state offered items have the official Master Naturalist logo, are approved with our logo trademark, our, our approved design and, and program colors, all of the things that make them um, cohesive with the, the look and the feel of, of a master naturalist. So we offer these state offered offerings either in, um, in our AgriLife bookstore or in our uh, bulk ordering system. And I'll, I'll get into that in just a second. Michelle, if you'll help me with the sound. And then um, local chapter produced items. Um, if you do have a, a local distributor, um, embroiderer, um, somebody who um, helps to put logos on gear for you, um, we, we do allow that, but we do have some brand guidelines that, um, that you, marketing and brand guidelines that your chapter must follow when using our trademarked Master Naturalist Dragonfly um, on, on locally produced items. Um, so you'll need to review the marketing and brand guidelines, which is on our doc on our website. That document is on our website um, and email Michelle and myself for uh, approval of that logo use. Uh, that helps us to protect the trademark um, for the dragonfly as well. Um, and, and we've got some updates that are going to be happening in 2022. And just a note on the, the logo use, we, since it is a trademark, uh, logo we do have to give permission to um someone to reproduce to produce it or reproduce it so another reason for the review and approval of that yes ma'am all right keep going Great. all right and then um two other types uh so i i'm gonna look at the right hand column first and then i'll go back over to the left hand column so i talked about our state offerings of master naturalist gear we have two different types of ordering systems for state offered master naturalist gear we have the agrilife bookstore where our merchandise is stocked in warehouses we do have uh, limited quantities and sizes however that those items that are on the bookshelf um, or in the bookstore will ship immediately um, and so those will uh, Although limited in quantity and sizes, you can get within the week. Um, I try to keep the AgriLife bookstore updated with inventory about every three to five months or so. Um, and so I've actually got an order coming together to put in this month. I've, uh, I'm hoping to get it in before the, um, before the holiday rush. And so that we'll have new items to go first thing in January. And then the second type of statewide ordering system that we have is a drop ship or a member item. This is what we also call a pop-up store. Um, this is a, a longer period of time. It's a, it's a uh, I guess, 
I don't know how to explain it, except it's a pop-up link that we offer where we're able to put a whole bunch of merchandise. You get to pick the size and the color and the, the customization, um, but you don't get it shipped to you right away. So the shipping actually takes about a month um, as we're collecting all of those orders from everybody. Um, and then we collect all of them, put in that bulk order, get that discount on the, the bulk items and then ship them after that. So it's not a Amazon um, two day prime by any means, but it does give us that discount on inventory. Um, and so we'll continue those throughout 2022. And then moving over to the left-hand side, that curriculum, um, we're gonna be sending this information out to your new, chap new training class directors here shortly. That's why I've got the big circle on it as a reminder to myself of something that I need to do. Um, but we have both new class bulk ordering um, and, um, and we did offer some annual meeting bulk ordering um, this year and we'll continue to do that every year that we can um, in the future as well. So I'll be sending those, uh, those links out in a follow-up email. Michelle, if you'll keep going. Yep, and then I'm, I'm working on that restock for the AgriLife Bookstore. Um, that AgriLife Bookstore link, if you click on it now on our website, it'll take you to this new AgriLife Learn website. I'm working on trying to get them to give us a, a, a short URL directly to the Master Naturalist gear. They're still working on their website. It's a, it's a big website, it's kerfuffle, um, but we are working on it. Um, so um, just know that our stuff is still there. It's just finding it is not the easiest right now. And, and I'm, I'm working with the bookstore to try and get that cleaned up. It's now called Our Real Life Learn. Okay, mm -hmm. another thing that I can update you guys on is our Master Naturalist license plate. As I sit here in the car with my Master Naturalist license plate on, um, my, my kids love to, to see my wild for you wagon um, driving down the road. Um, if you've ordered a Master Naturalist license plate, thank you. Our plates are for sale on the, the DMV website. Um, in quarter three of 2021, we sold 316 and, um, and $22 of each plate sold goes back into the state program office for us to be able to use for a variety of different um, uh, needs for our, our, uh, our state office and our state programs uh, to be able to funnel those back into resources for, for you at the chapter level. All right. Okay. Um, we can kind of come to the the towards the end of the part of our um, meeting today, and we just wanted to give our um, president, everybody on the call, incoming and out outgoing, a chance to ask any other questions that you may have. Um, kind of closing out the new closing out this year and then coming up to the new year. Um, if you want to go ahead and drop those in the chat, um, we will moderate those. And as we're doing that, I'm going to move on to the next slide because I do have, we're right at 205, 206 right now. Um, so in the essence of time, I'm going to move ahead to the next slide, but um, we'll come back and see if you have any questions in the chat too. Um, we wanted to let you know that uh, we are going to be taking off um, so much needed time over the, the holidays to spend with our family. Um, so basically our office will be closed um, December 17th through January 3rd over the holiday, um, but that typically is a, a greater slower time um, that we've seen in our email inbox, email inbox um, from you. So we hope that you're doing the same, taking some time off and enjoying the holidays with your family and friends um, over that time and that we look forward to seeing you in 2022. And we come back now. I've got a question in the chat from Carolyn. When can we yeah, Michelle, be involved with the annual meeting training? Of course. So for our Houston regional chapters, um, as we begin to look for 2022 annual meeting planning, um, I will schedule a site visit and invite all chapter presidents and leaders from the, the surrounding county areas. Um, to the Harris County chapter. Um, and I'm looking in February and March to make that site visit. And so I will send that link out, uh, that date out to everybody in the area to um, participate. Thank you. 
and give um give, i'll give everyone just a, a few seconds if you have any additional questions go ahead and drop them in the chat um other than that we arrived at the end <laughs> The end of our presentation, um, almost the end of the year, um, the end of our meeting. So unless you have any other questions, I um, wanted to say once again, thank you for who you are and what you've done. Um, thank you for saying yes and being um, a wonderful leader for your chapter and for the program. And we're looking forward to working with all of you in the new year, all of the new uh, incoming presidents and even those who are staying, everyone. We're looking forward to a great 2022 with you. And thank you again, Michelle, for running the tech for today to let me spend the morning outside. <laughs> you should stay on Mary Pearl for just a minute after. Yes, ma'am, um, I sure will. All right, I'm going to don't see questions. Um, I see lots of thank yous and thank you. Um, I'm going to stop sharing and I'm going to stop recording.